into modern surveying uh, unit number one where we'll be going to the second chapter or second lesson uh, having understood the basic principles and classification we'll be going on to more uh, about levels and leveling so what we are going to learn here we are going to understand what are the different types of levels and what are the different methods of leveling which will be carried out uh, as the course outcome says we have to understand surveying as well as leveling and uh, both the traditional as well as the modern instruments so the conceptual uh, understanding and of the instruments will be there for us now uh, if you look at the basic instrument uh, the dumpy level or the level uh, consists of two major tools one is the leveling instrument and one is the leveling stock on which the observations in the vertical plane are being taken so when we look at the types of levels we the the three major uh, types which are available or which are most uh, popularly used in the market is the dumpy level, uh, the tilting level and the automatic level. Now the dumpy level was or is still being used but uh, slowly it is being replaced by very modern in instruments. It is a instrument which is dominating the vertical uh, plane measurements for, for a very long time almost four to five decades. It is an optical instrument used to establish points in the uh, horizontal plane with respect uh, to the uh, sorry in the vertical plane uh, with respect to points uh, whether they are uh, uh, variations in the vertical plane. It is used in surveying and building with vertical staff to measure height differences. Now the instrument dumpy was uh, invented by Mr. William Kraut who, who was earlier using the most traditional Y level but which was very bulky. So the dumpy level is a very simple compact and stable instrument the telescope is rigid uh, rigidly fixed to the support it makes a T shape if you look here this is the telescope and this is the body of the this is the body of the instrument uh, in the in the vertical plane. A long bubble is uh, tube is attached to the top of the uh, telescope either it can be to the top or to the adjacent to the this is the bubble tube attached to the body of the instrument. Then the dumpy level literally means short and thick, dumpy as the word says. It consists of a line of collimation, a imaginary line from, from the eyepiece to the telescope to the object end which is through which we do the observations uh, and it is called the collimation axis, the line of collimation. Uh, there is a crosshair at this eyepiece end, there is a objective uh, at this uh, lens, uh, double convex lens at the objective end and there are foot screws of the instruments at the, uh, at the base of the instrument which are all set up on a tri tripod. The tilting level is an instrument which is uh, which also does the uh, all, all the instruments are basically meant for leveling but the tilting level is a special instrument which has got a, if you see this uh, this is the view which is seen in the eyepiece of the instrument uh, this I in the in the eyepiece you can see the level uh, the level bubble tube will be uh, projected here and if you bring them if you coincide them the leveling can be achieved that is a special screw which is called as a tilting screw which is uh, which is below this uh, eyepiece uh, and it is meant for uh, leveling by attaching the spirit level the telescope can be made parallel to the line of sight and this is used by the tilting screw the tilting screw is a variation to the dumpy level uh, and one that was often used by uh, surveyors because you can get greater accuracy. Basically tinting screw can, can achieve greater accuracy because every time you make an observation you will be seeing the reflection of the bubble tube in the eyepiece adjacent to another, uh, another eyepiece which is attached to the uh, parallel uh, to the eyepiece at the eyepiece end. And that is where the advantage of this instrument is there, but it is not popular for multiple level of observations only when you are interested in getting uh, accu really high, very highly accurate instruments. It is hinged to the, uh, it is not rigid like the dumpy level, it is fixed at this point. Now we come to the third instrument which is the leveling instrument. So level instrument is uh, basically a, as the word says, it is automatic level or auto level. It is an instrument easy to use. Uh, needs only to be set up with its circular bubble has a dom compensator. Now you can see here there is something called as this is one prism, this is another prism and there is uh, a mirror here. So all these three uh, uh, are called as the, now if you see this, uh, this 
So, this all will be uh, the used for the compensator mechanism. This is the compensator, me this hole is the compensator mechanism. So, what does this compensator mechanism does? It even if your line of axis is tilted, it will try to bring this line, uh, the horizontal line parallel to the, uh, it will be the line of collimation will be straight line. So, you would not get an inclined line even if the telescope is inclined. So, that is the uh, arrangement uh, done by this uh, uh, pendulum fixed prisms uh, and the whole thing is called as the compensator mechanism. The automatic level here some more uh, visual uh, illustrations are there to show that the line of sight remains whether it is uh, horizontal, whether it is inclined, the line of sight will always be horizontal. It is also called a, because of that reason it is also called as a self -level, leveling level. It is it is an instrument which includes a compensator mechanism a, which when set clo, uh, can automatically remove any rem, uh, remaining variations and thereby remove the make the uh, horizontal line of sight horizontal. It is preferred, uh, it is a most uh, popular instrument in today's context because of its uh, ease of use and uh, f speed of use. Now, of course, uh, all these uh, traditional equipments like the dumpy level, the tinting level and the auto level which we discussed just now are being fast being replaced by digital levels which are consisting of uh, electronic uh, uh, chips and uh, storage, internal storage and there is a bar coded stuff here uh, for making observations. So, this is a very popular instrument, but they are little bit costly. So, not used by the common uh, surveyor. Uh, unless he can afford this which goes in the range of 1 lakhs and above. The laser level is an instrument which is not strictly a leveling instrument, but is uh, as it is a level it is used for making uh, you can see there is a laser red laser light which will uh, which will rotate in the horizontal plane in the all 360 degrees and you will get a uh, horizontal level which is commonly used for footings and for uh, for your flooring works. So, this is footing where it can be, it, this is the body of the laser level which you see here. Okay. Uh, so, having understood the types of levels, we will be moving, moving on to the uh, types of leveling. Types of leveling means what are the different types? There are many types like simple leveling, differential leveling, fly leveling, check leveling, profile leveling, cross section leveling. So, uh, different types of levelings are available. Uh, now, what this levelling means, uh, let us see. Simple levelling where you will be keeping the instrument at the center and you, you do not move the instrument from one point. You will be doing the surveying only from one point, then you call it as a simple levelling. There will be a back side, four sides and maybe intermediate sides, but there will be no change points or the instrument will not be shifted from its position. So, that uh, levelling method is called a simple levelling. Now, you can see in the sketch here, there are uh, L stands for the level instrument. So, L1, L2, L3 are the instrument positions, but they are not called as change point. The change point is the position where the staff is changed. So, you will be taking a back side when you start with and you will be taking a fore side at the end of the work. Now, the the reading taken on the end of the work is uh, is the reading taken on the from the second instrument L2 as a back side and it will be the so, last reading will be called as the change point 2. The last reading is the foresight taken from the L2 position and the first reading for, taken from the L3 position. So, this is called as uh, backside for the third instrument position on the change point 2. So, you can see here this is the plan uh, top view of the area of the survey. L1, L2, L3 are independently placed anywhere uh, on the area and change points will be the positions where the staff readings are taken the the four sides and the back sides. The fly leveling. So, this is another methodology where you will be moving from one place to uh, if you are interested to find the, now this is the end point. Okay. The, this is your target uh, position where you want to find the level. So, you start your leveling from the benchmark here and you will be taking a back side a four side you will be taking a back side a four side back side four side so back side four sides so there will be no intermediate sides so the surveyor starts taking the back sides only 
and proceeds towards the work site till he finds a suitable place for temporary benchmark. So, all the works at the end of the work, the surveyor comes back to the original benchmark. So, when this is done, it is called as check leveling of course. When you do the uh, leveling in one direction, it is called as the fly leveling. And when you do the same work returns, I we call it as the check leveling. Okay. Now, flow profile leveling. Now, why? What is profile leveling? Profile as the word indicates, you want to know the profile of the ground. You can see here, the ground is up here, the ground is down here, the ground is up here, the ground is down here. So, I want to see the profile of this ground. So, in that case, I will be using the profile leveling. So, it is a differential leveling done basically along the center lines, along the uh, center lines of roads and railways to facilitate the uh, route survey. So, radius level at various points at regular intervals are taken along the line. After getting the radius levels, the profile can be drawn. So, this is the profile you can see here at the bottom, it is a sectional elevation and the top this is the plan on which you have taken the surveys. Cross section leveling as the name indicates, it is at right angles to the profile leveling. So, if A, B, C is the root of is your root, then uh, at 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, you will be taking cross section levelings at uh, say 5 meters uh, to the say 5 meters, 10 meters, 15 meters, 5, 10, 15 to the left hand right. So, 5, 10, 15 to the left and 5, 10, 15 to the right of the alignment or the center line. So, when you do that, you call it as a cross section learning. The purpose of this is to get more information about the uh, cross uh, information uh, along the cross side, along the lateral side of the route or the alignment. Now, precise leveling is a serving done for very high degree of accuracy. Here, all care and precautions are taken in this method to gauge the highest degree of leveling. So, any leveling where you do very high degree of accuracy using very uh, careful methods and uh, you see that no errors crop up, then it is called as precise leveling. Trigonometrical leveling is a indirect method of surveying where vertical distance between points are computed by observing horizontal and distances and vertical angles between points using the trigonometrical functions of sin, cos, tan to obtain vertical distance and elevations. We will be going into trigonometrical leveling uh, more into detail uh, in the uh, subsequent chapters. Uh, here we just understand that trigonometrical functions are used. Then we come to reciprocal leveling. The reciprocal leveling is done if I am, uh, if I cannot set my instrument in the center and I have to still get good accurate uh, observations of the difference of points between two points A and B and remove the error due to the curvature and uh, refraction uh, where the line of sight is get bent here. You can see in the sketch here, the line of sight is getting bent downwards. So, this method again uh, a full uh, fledged feature is the error at the point B, is the error at the point A uh, when the when the line, when the instrument is at the both banks of the river or the water body. So, there will be no error at the point A from the instrument position A, there will be no error at the point B at the instrument position B, but there will be an error at the other end. So, this is what is uh, reciprocal leveling and in reciprocal leveling, we can remove the error by taking the average of the two readings. So, the true elevation is given by the means of the two apparent differences. So, here the formula or the derivation shows us that error is a difference of the two reading, uh, mean of the difference and uh, the true height is the sum of the two, uh, two heights divided by two are the mean of that heights. Okay, so we come to our lesson end of the method uh, for uh, leveling and types of levels and leveling. Uh, we will be moving on the more applications of leveling in contours where we will be learning about what are contours, the characteristics and the methods and the interpolation of contours.